Yes, hello and welcome to Footy Talk with Jay Clark and Lee Montagna. Can't wait for the season ahead. 2024, what an even year. And we are going to start today's club-by-club preview with the Premiers. Collingwood, what a story they were, uh, Joey. We fell in love with Nick Dacos. We wrapped our arms around the coach, Craig McRae. But they got a big mountain to climb to try and get up there for back-to-back. Do you think they'll have the hunger and capability to write a black-and-white fairy tale for the second year in a row? Well, I'm, I'm sure they do. But as you touch on, they're going to have to defy the odds yep. again. But yep. this club, if, they, if there's one team that can defy the odds, because only... Four teams have gone back to back in 35 years. Yep. So I think every year we think the Premier is going to be right there again. And, and there's every reason for that to be the case. But we know history just says that it is really, really difficult. You look at Collingwood, it was one of the great seasons last year, one of the, the great fairy tale seasons. But they won their three finals by a total of 12 <laughs> points. It was, you know, it was amazing again, but probably just shows that they weren't that far ahead of the rest of the competition. And there'll be a number of teams breathing down their necks. But when you look at Collingwood, and the scary thing is for me, and when we do the numbers and and, and we like to look at how a team goes about their footies, they've still got so much scope for improvement. Who? No, more so their system and their style. Remember Mm. towards the back end of the year, and I spoke about it a lot last year, that they were really struggling to win ground balls in the middle of the ground. And they were playing from their back half. And they had to score from their back half, Mm. which is not really um, what had been a a sort of recipe and a formula for success in previous years, but they just threw that out the window. Their ability to score from stoppage and to score from the back half was off the charts. But generally, you need to be playing the game in in your forward half and and lock the ball in there, um, which is still an area that they can improve. So they've got elements to go to. And even being able to defend in their back 50. They were 14th in the competition. Amazing. Defending their defensive 50. Amazing. With all the names that everyone speaks about. More. More. But the, what they did is they, can, they didn't let the ball get in there. Yep. They were able to, the way they pressured, because they were a terrific pressure team. That front line of defence. Yeah. That first come bubble. forward and, yep. and they would stop it up the ground and maybe leave them a bit vulnerable in their defensive 50. But um, look, you can't question you know their, their leadership, their coach, their culture, their attention to detail. Yep. I mean, over the last two years, Jay-Z, they've played 21 games decided by less than 10 points. Yep. Craig McRae's only coach just under 50. And 21 of them have been decided by single figures. They've won 17 out of 21. Unbelievable. It's incredible. Yep. Um, so even that for me, as great as they are at closing games, and we've all lauded it, it's got to, there's got to be some parity in that. It's got to come back a little bit because just the history and, mm-hmm. and sport and, you know, luck and, you know, shots at goal and free kicks, it's mm-hmm. going to come back a little bit. So they're going to have their work cut out, but you're not going to put it past them. I think Dacos and Dagoe, just those two alone in the midfield, we're going to take them a long way. Just about the best double act in the combination, I, so, yeah. I reckon. Dacos, a deserved sort of Brownlow medal uh, favourite. And I've heard a little whisper, Joey. Yeah. I just, just keep this between us. Yep. All right, don't tell your mates about any of this, but I've heard his running numbers. Nick Dacos are off the charts. Gone right? to another level. So he's gone to another level. The summer running that he's he did like the last runner. year. He just keeps running the whole game. And that sweet, silky left and right foot. He is unbelievable. And Dagoe is the powerhouse, the wrecking ball. Those two together, it's Batman and Robin. And you can toss the coin as to who is Batman and who is Robin. You, you know, you mentioned all the things before about um, you know, the clutch and how they hung on and all that. Do you know what it is too? And you're going you're gonna to have to forgive me for saying this, but the organization of a footy team. Sometimes yeah. you keep some of the old boys around and you've got a champion there who's like Penglebury. It gets to that last step. Do you remember the go-ahead Jordan to go-y goal? Scotty comes in. He says, mate, you stand here. This is the exact play we're going to run. And that is the exact play that unfolds. All of it is deliberate. I don't find there's chaos and random chance in football. I know that. But when it came down to the clutch and the premiership needed to be won, they, they ran a play and they pulled it off. And that is where those cool heads, I think without Penglebury in that game, I just wonder whether Brisbane might have pinched that flag. I know you're going to take the piss out of me, <laughs> Fair enough. McCreary into the midfield. McStay hurts. McStay yeah. is, a, is a huge loss for the Pies. I'm worried about that aspect. Yeah. Who steps up? Is it Reef McInnes? It feels like over the summer he's got his nose ahead. Ash Johnson, I'm not sure. Nathan Kruger, I'm not sure. Reef McInnes looks like he's going to get the first bite of that apple. But that forward structure is going to be something which sort of unfolds a little bit uh, because McStay, I feel like, is the most important banana out of that forward mix. Yeah, and, and that, that's uh, already going to be um, you know, a setback for them without McStay. You know, Mason Cox is, I think, now 33 years of age. Is he still playing? you know, as a forward, yep. do they go a bit smaller? Um, 
I like their small ball style. I mean, Lockie Schultz is going to add, you know, with Bobby yeah. Hill and, and what they've already got down there. McCreary. They'll find ways to make it work. And, yeah. and no doubt they are going to be a major contender again. GWS, the team, who heartbreaking, just fell short. Can you, that met preliminary final was absolutely extraordinary, uh, that game. Adam Kingsley, what a job he has done getting this team and playing the style and a, um, and a unity. I don't ever feel like... I could be wrong here, Joe, but I feel like in the past, the GWS sides with their all their top draft picks and their high skills have been wanting just to fill their own boots. Now I feel like Adam and Adam Kingsley, they are playing a more united and cohesive football brand. You've got great Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're playing a terrific system. And again, we spoke about it in one of the previous shows, the, the, the Richmond system. I tell you what, with the Giants, it is an eerily similar um, path to Collingwood with what they have done. So, Ooh. so come with me. So the, the new coach, Adam Kingsley, in his first year comes yep. from the Richmond model yep. and they have a spike, yep. but all the things worked in their favor. So they won close games mm. and they were able to win at all different venues. And, and they did it not by dominating games. If you remember Collingwood's first year in 2022, but they did it by just short bursts of brilliance where they just blew teams out of the water. They play the similar style of footy, mm. that high, um, you know, turnover game, high pressure game, mm -hmm. and then they lose a preliminary final by one point. Scary. What happened to Collingwood in 2022? Exact same, <laughs> same path. Thing. They lose a prelim by one point after second half of the year spiking mm -hmm. and winning all those games. And the question was, can Collingwood continue? You know, there was some, I had some question marks here. Was yep. there a bit of luck in it? You know, yep. can they do it again? And yep. they did it again and went to another level. Yep. Other Giants following a very similar path that we just presume maybe, no, I'm not sure. Or is it, no, no, they are just going to go to another level again in 2024. Finn Callahan, Superstar. Yeah. He's just another uh, high-end talent coming off that chain. They're going to be great to watch. I love Toby Green. The whole competition going back a couple of years, couldn't have a bar of Toby Green. Now he's just about one of the most universally uh, loved, popular players in the game. And you know what? He, he, he pulled his head in a bit. You got to stop karate kicking blokes. You got to stop um, bumping Bonton Pally's head in the ground and biting well, we his ear. We all mature at some stage, like Jay Z. We all mature at some stage. It took me some a while. Do, some just do it at nineteen. Some of us are still <laughs> forty and maturing. Exactly right. Uh, next up, we have got Richmond Tigers. Now, for Richmond Footy Club, one of the biggest clubs in the competition, they've been flying under the radar a little bit under Adam Ooze. I haven't heard as much hullabaloo about the Tigers uh, this year. Dusty's had that magnificent preseason. They aren't in my eight, Joey. Do you think Adam Ooze can weave a miracle with its, with probably what an, an older list or a transitioning list? Yeah, well, they are. They're still the fifth oldest team coming into this season. Um, for me, I don't think they'll be playing finals. For me, Adam Uze's challenge is how quickly can he transition this list, transitioning out the players that are 30 plus. So we're yep. talking about, you know, the, the Grimes and Pickett, yep. McIntosh, Broad, Prestia, the older guys that don't have long to go. Yep. And bridging the gap from their 22 and unders because they still do have a strong core of players that are 27 and under. Mm -hmm. So a group that can still play finals again in, in, in three, four years. Yep. When you think about Helper and Taranto, Baker, Rioli, Jack Graham, Bolton, Noah Bolter. Yep. Like they've still got a nucleus yep. that are going to be around for the next sort of five years. But it's how quickly can the under 22s sort of get up to speed so that they have a, a group that can contend for finals again. That's going to be the challenge for Uze for this year yep. and next year. They do have some 22 and unders. I know you're sort of a bit, you know, thinking I'll, there's not a heap of talent there. I'll but get you the slows on that Yeah, a there, bit. there's a few, like Thompson Dow, Morris Rioli. We've seen some of Sonzi and Banks, Samson Ryan, Judson Clark. But the big one's Josh Gibkiss. Yep. He's there, probably there, the best of that group, the yep. one that's got the All-Australian potential yep. that we can see on him. If he can hold up and play a full season as a key defender, we're going to see Noah Bolter yep. play as a key forward. Uh, they might surprise a few teams. They might be hard to beat because, they, as we said, they still have a really strong nucleus and core. But Adam Uze is going to put his own sort of flavor on this team, a different style of footy to what they have played. And for me, it's going to be a bit of a you know transition period for the next two to three years. I love Rioli and the forward pressure he brings. Like you, I go to the Morris, footy. Yep. Yes, did I say yeah, well, Rioli? Yeah, just sorry, Morris Rioli. Yes, yeah. Daniel's a gun on half back as well. But I love when he hunts down opposition players in the forward fifty. He can build that tank. He's going to become a real constant threat. Tim Taranto, which 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 side of the cane corns uh, line do you sit on on Tim Taranto? Is he an A-grade footballer or is he someone who butchers it and burns it? No, he's an A-grade player. Yep. He's elite. He's elite at what he does. Everyone's got what? some flaws in their game. Why are we so slow on him then? Who's we so, who's we so slow on him? 
Well, I feel like there's a who? <laughs> there's a discussion. Well, Kane has okay, let it. Well, he said he wasn't Kane the top have his own 150. Opinion. Yeah, yeah Kane, okay. Kane's you reckon we his... need to rewrite the story on Tim Taranto at Richmond? But who's we? Kane is, doesn't think or whatever he thinks of him. That's fine. But yeah. I think I think he's an A great footballer. I mean, he, yeah. he's uh, where did he finish in their best and fairest? He won their best and fairest. Yes. Did he win it? So yeah. I mean, you're a best and fairest winner. Um, yep. And he's a pretty handy player, and yeah. he's very good at what he does. Yes, he's not an elite kick. We all understand that. But yep. his strengths um, are, are there for everyone to see, and he's a very good player. Uh, very good. Right, your old Bob, you played 287 games. You won two best and fairest, uh, you're a Hall of Famer at the St Kilda Football Club. Do you know the, the word I keep hearing, Adam Rabin, Joey, about what the is Saints? It? What do you hear? Like one word, just a little birdie in my ear, just keep saying, just keep an eye on how fit the Saints fit, are. They can run. Running. Oh, we're a running group. <laughs> we can certainly run. <laughs> we get to the contest. <laughs> and and, and, and it, some more additions through the draft has really uh, bolstered that. Uh, in Wilson, of course, who I don't think they've seen a runner like him since you used to do your best work on the on the uh, wing. So they are going to be chips in with effort again. I'm not sure they've got the absolute... You know, as much top-line talent as they would like yet, you've got to keep an eye on St Kilda's cab space. I think they'll be busy in the trade period in 12 months' time. But have you got St Kilda making the eight again, Joey? Oh, they are absolutely in the mix again. I'm surprised that there's um, some knocks, and most people I've heard have got them out of the eight. They're when, selling. When really... They were decimated by injury yep. last year. That, that starts periods of the time there. They had like five forwards that had played, you know, all of them had played under 10 games. Like there is still upside with this group. So it, it's interesting to see. Um, you must have read my notes because I spoke about here, the running power and yep. the speed. It's been a clear focus. Even the way they've drafted, as you touched on, Wilson, Dow, yep. Liam Henry, yep. Riley Bonner, a beautiful kick. That they've already got running power. Wanganine Miller and, and Higgins and Butler, Sinclair, Brad Hill and Mason Wood we know about. They'll be around the mark again. They're well coached. Yep. Their profile sits really well. They're top three defensively, yep. which is a great start. Wilkie. They're, they're pretty good and, and really strong around the contest. Their clearance game needs some some work. Yep. You're right about the star pair, and that is still the issue for St Kilda. They don't, I don't think, have yet the list that is going to challenge for a top four list. No. But again, like we just mentioned with Richmond, how quickly can these five or six elevate to be all Australians to join the likes of Sinclair and Steele and Marshall and Wilkie, who are their, their sort of their best four players, all Australian talent. Yep. Max King, can he become an all Australian calibre? Is it this year or is it next year? Owens, Philippu, Wanganine, Miller, like all have the talent. Yep. It's how quickly they can become um, elite. And that's when you get, you know, a team that can compete for top four. I think back to the St Kilda days of 04, 05. So before that 09, 10 team, we had some star power in sort of Robert Harvey and Fraser Gehrig and Hamill and Max Hudgston. But as soon as Rewalt and Goddard and Del Sano and Luke Ball and Kazitsky and Milne all elevated themselves, we had the combination. And 04, 05 was, it was a, a sort of really strong period for St Kilda. I can see something meshing with this group. Maybe not this year. Maybe it might be the, yep. the year after. But I also think they're around the mix for, for top yep. eight. You know what they're going to be? They're going to be really hard to play against. Always. Because Absolutely. the team who comes up against St Kilda, you know they're going to have to be on their bike. They will get to the contest. You're right about King. I think I reckon he can kick 50 goals this year. I'm buying the Max King. If stuff. he plays 23 games, he'll yep. kick more than 50. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think Absolutely. I think that will be the um, uh, the benchmark uh, for him. I think they're going to go. They're going to Stephen Silvani is going to get the biggest fishing hook he can find in about uh, six months' time. He's going to put the biggest, fattest, juiciest worm on that thing, and he's going to be trying some doing some work in the trade and free agency space. Uh, but St Kilda, after losing memory in that final, got done by GWS, but certainly tried their absolute best. Caminiti there as well, as you mentioned, um, going to be a bit to like for. The Saints. That is it for today, Joey. That has been absolutely magnificent. We have got more club by club previews. We're going to finish it out in the next episode. This has been Footy Talk. Like, subscribe, listen. Uh, we would love your feedback. So hit us up on TikTok, Instagram, wherever you can find us. Uh, it is Footy Talk. We'll be back with more shortly.